so here we are um, this is my first group ride since the um, coronavirus nonsense happened uh, just catching up with a few mates to go out for a bit of a ride in the morning we're gonna head over Clearwater Mountain Road and then I think up to Glorious and then I forget where we're going after that but have a little bit of a nice little trek planned so it should be quite fun that Clear Mountain Road is always nice it's a uh, good view twisty not overly fast speed limit but you know similar to Glorious at 60 k's an hour but that's fine especially for a group ride and we tend to try and meet up you know at least once a month and go for a ride but um, it doesn't always happen of course because um, you know we all have various things that go on in our lives families girlfriends whatever and um, as you'll know when you're a rider especially if you're not a single bloke then um, finding time to ride unless you're a ladies a rider it's uh, it's a hard it's a tough one it's always a you know it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's always a fight basically between who's gonna get the time on a Saturday or on a Sunday and with me it's on a Saturday so um, I like to take my family out but um, I like going riding as well so you know, I figure once a month it's okay. And as a, as my I've only got little kids, so um, I've got one that's three and one that's six, so they're kind of at that handful age. So I always feel a little bit bad leaving my missus at home when that's happening. But um, that's the nature of riding bikes, I guess, until we can all ride together. So over here now in Australia and Brisbane we're sort of coming into well we're pretty much in winter now and this is actually quite an ideal time for riding over here because generally it's not too wet not too rainy um, and it's a lot cooler so getting out and riding is just more comfortable whereas midsummer what I've sort of figured out over here not that I've done it because I'm not the sensible sort of guy but the ideal in summer is you have to get out nice and early you get out well before sunrise because it's so warm at night and the mornings are so warm you can get out at five o'clock or four o'clock in the morning and go for a ride for a few hours and be much more comfortable than if you came out at say 10 o'clock So yeah, the ideal is to get out nice and early in the mornings and if you get out nice and early in the mornings um, in the summer you um, will enjoy the ride a hell of a lot more than what you will if you come out mid-afternoon or you're riding into mid-afternoon where it just can be, you know, it can be up around almost 40 degrees sometimes and it's, um, you've really got to have good, good cooling gear on to ride in that kind of weather. You're certainly generally not riding in full leathers because it's just way too hot for it. Whereas uh, winter over here you can ride in full leather so like today I've got my full leathers you know they're still a perforated leather so they still let the air flow through they're not uh, not a full winter set but um, they're kind of like what I call a mid-level set I guess with a little bit of perforations in them that allows a little bit of cooling to happen uh, but without getting your chest and everything cold as you're riding into the winter if it's a little bit cool and I find that's ideal I just wear it pretty much with a t-shirt and a um, thermal underneath that if I need it like today today it's probably needed in certain areas and it's really nice really nice really nice
we were just waiting for a couple of other fellas to catch up back there. They, we rode with a, a varied group of riders, you know, some of them slightly quicker and some of them slightly slower. Uh, we don't do a real fast pace or anything like that, we're not racing through here. But um, we do have some slightly newer riders who are not so, quite so familiar and not so good in corners, so we tend to make allowances for that and we'll uh, stop every now and again and uh, let those riders catch up so that we can continue to ride together which works quite well for all of us so we can kind of set our own paces so that no one feels like they have the stress to keep up which is which is good in a group ride you certainly don't want people overcooking corners and um, outriding their ability when you're riding together it's um, those kind of group rides generally end badly I'm guessing that probably at the other side of this road we'll probably stop again because this is, uh, well it's not a super technical road but it's a slightly more technical road. And it's interesting, this is actually the first time I've ridden uh, this Clearwater Drive um, backwards. Well, backwards for me. <laughs> like, lots of other people are riding from this direction. But this is my first time riding from this direction. And uh, the view going back, it's always amazing. You're up and down a road a hundred times and you never think to go back the other way. Um, especially if you're on a loop like I typically am. So when you come back on the loop and you come back the opposite way, you see um, all these, um, it's like going down a new road almost. I mean, you see all these new things that you just didn't notice in the other direction because you're looking the opposite way. And it's well worth doing on any half decent road is to um, go up and down it in both directions for sure. So you would never see the city or notice the city when you come up here normally because um, you're simply not in that, you're simply not looking in that direction, you're looking away from it. So we've just come out of Clear, Clearwater Drive and we're now heading towards the Mount. Not glorious. We had a bit of a stop just up there just to allow the guys to catch up again. And it's a great day for riding, really, really good. Really good. Not looking like it's going to rain at all today. It's pretty dry, which is great. So heading into Sanford now, and that's where we turn off towards um, Glorious. Of course on the weekend when you come out there are a lot of cars out, it's pretty normal. As I've said before, very few places where there are official passing lanes, which is a little bit frustrating. A lot of road works around at the moment as well. So you've got to have your wits about you basically when you're out riding. <laughs> We've got a convoy going on here from the looks of things.
pretty crazy. 60 and an 80k area. It's ridiculous. And this is, you know, this is the thing we're riding with a different, uh, you know, with a few bikes. We sort of have to be a little bit careful. You could, you know, I could just, you know, as an individual, you could just go and overtake these cars without too much difficulty. But you've got to think of the people that are riding with you and their capabilities and whether it's going to be safe for them to do some of those things, which often it, always, it, it, it often isn't. And you don't want to cut someone off or cut someone out by mistake as well. That's the other thing. That's alright, we're not in a hurry anyway. It's good, it's just good to be out, good to be on two wheels again. The one thing I've learned over the years is that when you start getting impatient, that's what gets you killed, that's what gets you hurt. Uh, you do an overtake somewhere in a place where normally if you weren't feeling so frustrated, you wouldn't do it. And um, you get caught out. Not every time, but it can happen most of us if we think back to the accidents we've had most of them are usually caused by something stupid that we did on our part not always sometimes cars do silly things as well but generally they're things that can be avoided by us if we're just paying a little bit of attention to what we're doing to our speed and our surroundings and what's happening around us where we're located on the road whether we've planned an escape for ourselves when we do something it's hard to think of all the things all of the time and that's why we, uh, you know, when you're on two wheels it's easy to have a mistake and easy to have a problem. So left here to Sanford. If you wanted to go to Mount Me, you'd go to the right, you'd go up to Daybrew. And then you turn off there to Mount Me to the Scenic Drive. But we haven't done Glorious for a long time, so it's going to be good for us to do that. There's a few little shortcuts that avoid these main roads as well. I don't know whether these guys are going to use them, but um, you could generally use those roads. Yes, we are. We're going to avoid the main road, I think. So this is a nice little back road, it's a little bit slower again but it's uh, nice and twisty in places which is quite good, makes for a more interesting way to get around. I mean, there's so many roads here and I'm so new. I mean, I've only been in Brisbane for a year, as I've said before, and um, it just takes forever to learn all the roads. It's such a big place. Um, where I lived in New Zealand, in Wellington, it's a, it's a, it's, you know, it's a small little town, city at the end of the, at the end of the island, and um, you're pretty much only going one way, and there's a limited amount of roads you can ride. I mean, they're all nice roads, but when you come to Australia and you start living here, it's like just amazing. I mean, everywhere you go, there's amazing scenery, and there's a million roads to choose from and explore some of them become gravel which is a bit frustrating but you figure out where they are and you find your own little favorite roads which is which is just awesome and if you're a rider and you're coming here for a holiday if you've got the time um, bring your helmet and hire a bike even you know it would be well worth it it's um it is really an amazing place and everything just looks that little bit different, you know, I mean, every country has the same kind of things, like riding through these kind of roads, you could be mistaken for thinking you're just in the back road in New Zealand, but when you get to other places, like up on the mount, there's um, quite unique scenery, and the earth and everything, and the way the rocky outcrops are done and everything, it all, it's all just that little bit different, not dramatically different, but 
different enough when you look at it you go wow I'm in a different place I really am somewhere different somewhere unique with unique plants and unique um, animals and just everything really anyway we'll continue on up the road and then I'll, I'll come back on and we'll update you again so now we're heading up towards Mount Glorious we're on basically on the main main run now this part of the road gets quite interesting Mind you, the more interesting way to actually come up here is to actually not come up this road but it's actually to go around and then come up via Mount Nebo via the Gap and that's actually a much more interesting way if you've got a little bit more time depending on where you're going because this uh, road's a little bit shorter as you're on your way up It's still nice but it's, it's different I expect because we're sort of just out of lockout and stuff that there will be um, a lot of cars up here as well which is you know you get some real real terrible road hogs up here that just do 40 k's an hour with 100 cars behind them and every uh, lane where they have an opportunity to pull over they just keep going and stick in the middle of the road and that's uh, common aggravation among riders and drivers up over here anyone who's been up over here will have experienced it at some point and the weekends are always the worst for that if you come up here during the week it's far better really yeah. and the other thing of course if you're coming up here on the weekend is you've got to really watch your speed because uh, the police are just everywhere speed cameras and cars and nonsense Up 10 kilometres over the limit will be classed as serious speeding or something like that. Anyway, not the point today. feel the temperature drop as you get into the shadows through here it's just so much cooler that was pretty cool an old um, two-stroke back there I can still smell the two-stroke RGV 250 VJ 22 very cool bike started in the early 90s uh, well the VJ 21 uh, VJ 22 started in 1991 with the banana swing arm model that was a pretty cool bike upside down forks and a whole bunch of stuff that even bigger bikes at the time didn't have um, and for a 250cc two stroke it was a very very quick bike So as we go into here we'll start to be, begin the ascent soon, you sort of head through the gorge a little bit and then you start to head up the hill. It's quite steep in places so cars tend to go quite slow up there unless they're powerful. And as you come through here I think there's only like one or two places where you can officially overtake and I think that's about it. I don't think there really is anywhere else. I think it's all pretty much, um, well, I could be wrong but I'm pretty sure most of it is just double, double white lines which is no overtaking. Pretty sure that's the situation.
you have to watch the condition of the road up here a little bit it can be a little bit hairy in places sure whether this part of it's 70 k's an hour or 60 k's an hour a lot of it's 60 oh there you go it's 60 very typical so it's very easy to exceed that of course I tend to avoid it because you know 40 k's an hour over the limit over here and you lose your license on the spot you're gonna pound your bike and all sorts of things which is a real problem So as you can see here, there's really nowhere to pass. It's uh, busy most ways. There's not really many straight places where you could do it or do it safely. So we've come off the uh, main trunk down there and now we're heading up to the main road. Oh, sorry, I should say we're on the main road, heading to up sort of towards where the cafe would be, or the cafes. So now we're into the village, and the village is 50 k's an hour, so and it really is, you've really got to do probably 50, 60 through here because it's, um, it's pretty built up, lots of houses, driveways and things that could cause all sorts of problems if you're going fast through here. Tons of bikes out today, of course, because it's such a good day. We've got kind of clouds over the other side. I hope I don't get rained on again. I've been rained on a few times when I've been up here. In fact, every time I've been up um, Glorious and down the other side of it, um, I've been rained on every single time. Uh, which is twice. <laughs> so it's not like it's heaps, but um, it feels like every time when it's every time you do it and absolutely soaked through it didn't just rain when I last time I came through here I mean it bucketed down big time and this is the famous Mount Glorious Cafe um, as you can see bikers love it good coffee here it's a good place
so good to come up here and see the cafe full again. Um, you know, it's terrible during the lockdown. You come up here and there's just no one there for obvious reasons. But um, it's good to see that you know Brisbane is slowly getting back to its uh, norm, and not the norm that the government wants us to get back to. Thankfully, the norm that people want to get back to, because the norm that the government would have us go back to would be a shocking norm, I think, where we're scared of each other and scared of getting the flu. Terrible. So it's good to see people mingling again and people being happy again and out having coffee and riding their bikes and doing all the things that people love to do and not allowing the government to completely destroy the fabric of society through the lockdown. So this side here, this can be quite cool. I can feel the temperature up here. I mean, it's probably dropped 10 degrees. It um, really is a lot colder up here and this is why I have my thermals on underneath. Sometimes down the bottom in the sort of hotter weather it'll feel uh, too much you know but um, but here uh, you need it it's uh, really drop the temperature really drops off a lot and you can really really notice it and this is my first time um, to head down the hill on this side so it's all very interesting I've been told on the forums that there's a lot of uh, road works up here and a lot of patches dodgy patches and that people have um, fallen off on some of the patches that are I'm not sure whether it was this side or the other side, but um, there was a lot of road work done anyway that was a bit substandard. Much like happens all around the world, I guess. And um, people had offs on their bikes because they ran into the so-called completed road works with gravel all over the road and um, potholes that were only kind of half filled that swallowed front bike tires and things. <laughs> Bounced people all over the road. But yeah, this is amazing through here. This is just amazing scenery through here. It's really, really good. You really need to come up and see it if you haven't seen it before. Come up. The trees and everything are just amazing. The scenery, as I say, is amazing. The road itself is pretty cool. It's uh, uh, quite a technical road. Uh, especially when you take the bumps and the road condition into consideration. And I believe it used to be 100 k's an hour through here, or 80 k's an hour or something silly at some point. And now it's only 60, uh, which is a bit of a shame really, because I'd prefer if it was 100 still, so I could sort of regulate my own speed. But um, but anyway, you know, I mean, maybe 60 is a better speed through here, considering the condition of the road. But 80 would be better. <laughs> be easy to do 80 around here, I think. Very easy. I mean, the good thing about these slow corners is one of the things you can do is you can practice uh, your lines. So it doesn't matter whether you're going fast or slow to practice lines. You can still get your lines right for the road. I'm not talking about racing lines, but about road lines where you set your position on the road so that you can see the furthest around the corner. So for example, approaching this corner, we should be over towards the center line so we can see far around the corner and we should be turning in slightly later so that we're not cutting the apex of the corner off and that's safer for us to do that because that gives us plenty of room to maneuver around we can see cars as they approach us or trucks or whatever it is that's on the road and we can move our position change our position on the road to suit so I can easily change my position from there to the other side pretty quickly but the main thing the main advantage of this is it gives you so much more view around a corner and when you're coming around a corner on the opposite side, obviously you're going to do the opposite thing. You're going to change your position to lane position number one. And you should be holding your line just that little bit longer again. So, see those guys tipping in a little bit early. We, if we tip in later, we're not over the centre line. We're not hanging our body over the centre line. And that means that um, if a car comes around that corner a bit too fast and it's half into our lane, we have uh, room to get out the way. 
and that's important you know on a bike because um, even though your bike's hanging over this side of the road your helmet and your body could be partially in the other lane and if you were to encounter a truck or something coming around on, and it's um, you know come around a little bit fast and it's gone over the center line uh, it's much much harder to maneuver from that position So we're out of the bottom of uh, Glorious now, out to the main roads again, back out into the open pretty shortly. And most of the riding once you get through here, it's just, uh, you know, fast winding corners, straight roads. And countryside really, there's, um, it's not as interesting as coming through the mountain. I mean, it's still nice, but, um, the mountains my favorite bit and I imagine it would be the favorite of many others as well yeah and it's been a great day so far we've seen a lot of bikes still seeing a lot and it's been a good ride a few cars on the hill but not too many and most of them were pretty courteous and sort of move to the left and allow you to pass so you could slip between them and not have to go over the white lines which was great so overall in all it's been pretty good
So this part of the ride I haven't been on before, I've never been down here, so this will be interesting. Be good if we can stop somewhere too because my um, one of my earplugs has slightly come out and it's kind of annoying me now it's not really doing its job properly anymore and I really want to cut that wind noise down it's pretty bad with this helmet I think later this year once I get back into earning some dollars I'm gonna I'm gonna eliminate this helmet and get something quiet I'll get a road helmet Yeah, in a road helmet, they just cut the wind noise down a lot more. The helmet that I've got on is a bit more of a race helmet. And the other problem I find with this is that um, even though it's quite a nice light helmet, um, it's too small at, around your chin area. And so when I've got my sound set up and at my centre, oh, my microphone is right on my face and it um, destroys the sound a bit. And it's just overall, overall it's just annoying. Um, and I think I'll go back to another showy. I had a showy in the past. I, had a, I haven't had a road show going showy, mind you. I've only had a, um, a track-based version. But I'll get a, road, a, sh a showy road helmet this time, which won't look quite as slick, but at least it'll uh, be quieter, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for when I go for rides like this, I'm not racing. I'm just out to have fun, and I really want something that's quiet that I can enjoy the ride with. So you know your gear makes a big difference the type of helmet you use and so on and you want your ears intact and the other thing for me because I like to record my rides every now and again and I like to be able to get the sound happening I need the microphone in the right place not pressed right up against my face where it's going to be all where the sound's going to be all messed up where the wind noise is going to start to get into it every now and again and mess the sound up as well. I just don't want that. Probably be quite nice to do this run backwards as well. So I've only done it this direction, but it probably it's probably quite nice to do it back in the other direction as well, so that you can see the lakes and things. Surprised that the speed limit through here is not 100. So unfortunately, I didn't have the camera on back there, but we've just passed another part of the Wivenhoe Dam where you can see the dam basically from the back side or the front side, depending on which way you come from. I think it's the back side because I'm further north, but um, I normally come from further north. But yeah, that was pretty amazing. Would have been quite nice to stop there and show you guys some. Um, Definitely I'll have to come back here and do that. I think we planned actually once before to ride up around the back of here, but um, it didn't eventuate because we, um, oh, we were just goofing around doing it. We ended up doing a different ride and it rained and kind of rained us out. But um, yeah, pretty, pretty amazing. And that's why it's so cool to explore these roads, you know, go to these places you haven't been before and check them out. You'll see places probably where you could, you know, 
take a tent and go camping or something like that if you wanted to or go for a walk and that's part of the fun of owning a motorbike is um, it's just that little bit different to doing it in a car you know a little bit freer you feel kind of more connected with the nature that surrounds you which you don't really get when you're in a car and I'm not beating on cars I mean cars have their purpose but for me personally I would rather ride my bike every day of the week and if I didn't have to take my car somewhere I would always take my bike and often I don't get to take my bike as much as I might like but um, you know sometimes it's raining or it's miserable weather or cold or something and these tyres that I've got on this bike are not so great in the in the wet so that kind of puts me off riding in the wet but normally where I used to live I would ride you know rain, shine, wind, whatever I've ridden on nights where I probably shouldn't have been out riding and I've ridden over the desert road in New Zealand when it was um, there were signs out to say to don't do it and um, that was actually one time when I considered maybe that it wasn't such a good idea because <laughs> that was pretty dangerous but you know it's good to ride in all kinds of weather and you won't um, you're not going to become an experienced rider riding down the straight roads and you're not going to become an experienced rider riding only in the sun only on a nice day once a week it just isn't going to happen it takes years and years and years of riding and I don't even class myself as an experienced rider at all like because I rode bikes for a long time when I was younger and then I had a big break and didn't ride bikes for oh, the best part of probably I don't know 10 years and then I got back into it and then I didn't ride again for a little while due to money and family and other things and you lose the habit you lose you lose some of it you know it takes a little bit of time to pick up those skills again it's always good to do courses in New Zealand we had a number of courses which were subsidized um, and it looks like over here you've got to pay for the courses pretty much the whole the whole amount I don't know what it costs but it's probably worth it you know even if it's 500 bucks it's probably well worth doing because um, even if you're an older rider who's been riding for a long time it's amazing the things you learn when you go into a course with someone who's um, been teaching it all for years you just uh, pick up these little tips that just make your riding better and better and better going I imagine we're gonna head towards Esk no we're not found out all right interesting So we're just heading into Fernvale now, I think we're going to stop here and have a bit of lunch and then uh, head back from there. We saw the old Stinger patrol car back there and someone was warning us as well that there were cops out and about. Maybe they had a speed trap set up there earlier, who knows, quite possible. Now heading um, back up towards the Wimmenho Dam. Wow, 
welcome to Lake Wivenhoe and it's pretty nice up here This is pretty amazing. We were on the other side of here before, um, and you couldn't quite see this bit. And we're headed up towards Kilkoi anyway, so um, we're going to head up that way, a little bit of back roads again, and then we're going to head home from there. Uh, I think I'm going to head up over Mount Me and do my usual trick, but I'm not fully decided yet. So here we are now in Esk, well close to Esk I think this is, what is this called? The Gannon Esk Road, we're around that area anyway. Soon we'll be heading back up into the Twisty Mountain, which will be fun. my first time through here as well so kind of cool to see it I always love all the old little the old buildings you know you know these old buildings that would have been built more than a hundred years ago pretty awesome so much more interesting than the modern plastic looking stuff we have around now So that is pretty much the town of Esk, I guess. So nice out here now too, now it's not all dried up and looking like it's going to catch on fire. Summertime it was everywhere around here, it was just dry as anything. But the rain's helped a lot. It just looks so nice. So we're headed towards Kilcoy now. So now we've just headed off the main road. I didn't film much of that because it's pretty boring really, You're just riding in a straight line. Not very interesting at all, but this bit is supposed to be a little bit more interesting, so I haven't gone to another place I haven't been. Little back road. 
we'll have to look up the name of it later. I think it was called Gregor's Road, but I'm not sure. And I wasn't paying heaps of attention, so. Anyway, that's where we are. Nice little back road. 